Kavan, brave souls. I am your GM in the Great Barrier, and we are here tonight for more Star Trek Adventures Broken Sword. We are back after an unexpected break for the next part of our episode. Flatwi Je Flat Lukach Part four. It's always my best attempt at the Klingon there. Before we get started. For those in the archives, you will notice the links will be in the description, but I always have references to make to our good friends and fellow streamers here. But we have uh, first on our list here, one Xyla OXO, who in this game we, we know as going by Caligo. He is our chief engineer, Raldar, uh, a very busy uh, Gorn friend. Uh, tell me, uh, Calico, what are you up to over on the channel right now? Well, uh, I have a GoPro now, so, you know, you can imagine how that's gonna go. <laughs> I have a complete lack of imagination, which is very bad for a tabletop campaign game master. Wow. But it will be fun, I'm sure, undoubtedly. So undoubtedly. I would, I would encourage everyone to check that out. And I would encourage anyone who is beeping right now to uh, mind their beeping and uh, not broadcast it if possible. And that was me turning on the GoPro. Ah. <laughs> what proof? What implications will the GoPro have on the Broken Sword adventure? Find out right now. Well, uh, I'm gonna strap it to Dar's head. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting you're gonna get a live fee as he commits another war crime on <laughs> Point of View. <laughs> oh uh, uh. He, he is he is our best uh, our best mute, uh, mutant clone boy who is learning uh Ted's table manners. And then of course uh, we have our own overland gamer on his quest for quality, Joe, who plays our captain and helm officer. Tell us, how is, how is everything going? Anything particularly going on either on the Twitch channel or on the uh, Quest for Quality YouTube channel? Not much currently. Um, the Our local game dev group just started their month-long game jam called Spoopy Jam. So I'm going to be working on a project for that. I haven't decided if it's going to be digital or uh, tabletop. Probably tabletop. That's what I default to. And then setting everything up uh, for NaNoWriMo next month. So it's it's a pretty full full uh, month of, of writing and fun. Very good. Very good. Uh, the GM has realized that he has completely forgotten to grab anything to drink and is quickly feeling the onset of a parched throat. So for those that are looking forward to this, just a quick word from our sponsor. When you want a good meal, that's no big deal. Gawk pockets. When a hungry crew shows up for a meal, gawk pockets. Gawk pockets with our patented gawk cryo technology. Once you heat these little tasty treats, the gawk really come alive and are as fresh as the gawk your grandmother served the empire long ago. So much flavor that doesn't take up a lot of space in your cargo holds are great for captains out on long trips. Gawk pockets available at your local star bases near you. I'm gonna kill you. Okay, we are back. And yes, written and performed by our own Overland Gamer. Once again, another reason to go check out everything that Joe does. Edited, however, by me. With all that, let's get into a recap and uh, get things started here. When last we left off, the Yan had arrived in the Mastical system. Uh, you've come initially just to complete your last mission, which was just to convey a passenger, um, somebody seemingly marooned or escaped to a distant uh, tropical world. Uh, you've gotten him dropped off and you decided to reprovision to see what goods you could pick up. Mastical is a very bustling trade world. It's better off than the captain's own, uh, or that is to say, uh, the lord of your house's world, a much 
better off, much wealthier in that sense. So it was a good opportunity. In the process, you found a great many uh, cast of characters, including ships from noble houses that are apparently around. Uh, various, like, roguish sort of uh, characters are elements of uh, minor powers and just freebooters from all over the area. There are Terran designs, there are uh, uh, there are Sulaban, Uridian. There is a Creel ship, which, upon noticing you... Uh, very nearly started a confrontation that the An seemingly would have won. Um, but it seems most of them are here to participate in the kit log. A, for lack of a better term, interstellar race uh, over a section of space near Mastical. Um, you will be warping from destination to destination where you will undergo a relay race where you have to fly closely through beacons, dealing with the likes of hazards such as... Dealing with hazards, the likes of which include dense asteroid fields, stellar uh, gases and nebulas, and even a slingshot maneuver around a neutron star. Things that would devastate crews that are not sufficiently working together or ships that are not up to snuff. So Azik uh, on a lark signed you up for that, and you are all dealing with the fallout. Um, in at least one of those cases, uh, a member of the crew has dealt with it by locking the entire crew inside the mess hall, or everyone that is present, which, to be fair, was most of them. Um, it has put a damper on your planning session right now, and, uh, yeah, while most of the crew are presently away in that location. Um, though I I think that it's better that we just uh, let's let's jump around a little bit. We're gonna start our scene today with a very close look at a point in deep space. Uh, or the just the empty blackness and stars or momentarily interrupted as we pan past a navigational beacon. A gray and brown plated object uh, illuminated not just by distant stars around it, but by lights at either end of the beacon and worn lettering that clearly reads in Klingon if one were to look close enough. Uh, also among that group are an array of vessels of all manners, of all configurations, and there we go, now it's visible. Vessels of all manners, of all sorts of configurations. We're talking about raiding vessels, uh, cargo ships, all of them quite small, quite uh, limited in scope or even very stripped down. A channel opens across uh, to the full array of vessels. Competitors! To test your skills and your equipment today is a trial as great as any other. You compete not simply against your fellow shipmates, but against the cosmos itself. You test your guile, your courage, and will against the hostile environments of the galaxy. The victor will win much glory, but all who survives this challenge prove themselves worthy of respect. Prepare yourselves! At the lower echelon of this section, uh, a vessel, a raptor-class ship, the Yan, floats in a ready position, poised to spring forward with the rest of this ragtag grouping. It almost seemed, however, that this would not be the case mere hours before, when the vessel was in lockdown, not by will of its captain or overlord, but of a program that had spent some time in there. The course to break that stalemate begins, uh, well, uh, when we arrive in... Uh, 
back in the ship's port some hours before, where the ship's cook and a burgeoning scientist by the name of Trazen, Traven Lex, uh, an unnervingly, uh, uh, an unnerving seeming human shipmate that appears as much stitched together or welded in some cases as anything, uh, walk in the company of an Orion man whom they had met in the, uh, uh, whom they had met aboard the orbiting Mastercal station. Um, so, it is, it's very deeply unusual circumstances under which, Traven, uh, you are bringing this person on board. Having just met them a very short time earlier in a bar under very strange orders, both from Azic and seemingly with the ascent of uh, your first captain. Uh, that is to say, Tabok, who has, after, uh, after in his case, explicitly banning you from ever conversing with Orion women... Um, allowed you to go and uh, basically seek out uh, mm, <coughs> companionship. And, well, this is the one person that you have thought brought along. To be fair, there is something irresistible, persuasive, just magnetic about them as you uh, have walked along. Um, it's, I don't know if it's something in the air, something about the way they... Uh, uh, the way they speak, but it, it very much has, uh, like, it's given you the impetus to bring them on board. So, um, stepping through the gateway, uh, stepping through into the debarkation area, to the section connected to the Yon's uh, ventral hatch, you, uh, the, the Orion, whom you know as Davis, and Lynn, uh, your human crewmate, all step aboard and onto the elevator. Uh, Traven, uh, as you get there, or even beforehand, would there be any words you want to exchange uh, amongst yourselves, or any? If not that, would there be any thoughts that you would have? Uh, Traven is focused on the seething rage that he has right now. That is completely fair. It, it is going to drop the entertainment off right on the bridge and leave. That is his full plan. That's all he's thinking about right now. Understood. Understood. Uh, well, Traven, uh, the moment that... Um, I should, I suppose I should ask, too. Um, Lynn, would you have any... Would there be any perceptible change on your end or uh, decisions that you might... Anything you'd be doing in particular? Uh, no, no. Uh, keep an eye on Traven. Uh, sort of, perhaps figuring out what the, what, what, why there he has made such decisions. Why the captain wants to do this? <laughs> uh, question. Yes. Before we go, before we go further, uh, I thought Lynn and the company were all going to go infiltrate that frill ship that I told them to do so as a captain. Mm. Could you repeat that? Um, with the with the connection yeah. we currently have, it's not coming through as clear. Sorry. Um, I thought I thought Lynn and Traven and Davis, well, mostly Lynn, was hired by the fake captain to go to infiltrate the frill ship like right away, or are they coming back to get provisions for that? Uh, I think that they were going to come back for that. In part, Lynn has at least decided that um, she is... Uh, well, Lynn probably realizes that if there's to be any wet work to be done, uh, that the the ship's cook and a uh, an exotic dancer are not ideal to keep along. Okay, fair. Just asking. All right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And Davis, uh, you know, you are, you are, uh, when you do enter the, uh, when the, you enter the elevator, it's, this is a, 
I'd say that this whole process is pretty routine for you. You have done things very similar to it before, and you know, as you you feel yourself kind of reaching out, uh, detecting all manner of uh, like the hum of these systems, you get a very different sense of connection. And uh, David drags his hand uh, along the inner plating. Uh, is there a nearby computer console for him to access? Uh, there is a terminal uh, on, uh, like in the elevator section. It's very basic, but you could conceivably arrange. Uh, you could conceivably uh, tap some system from here. <laughs> I can't roll right now, but... I can handle that for you. Yeah, so I would like for him to first go forward and examine it and start... He can't really see what he's doing, but he does start messing with it. Like pulling, uh, pulling the panel out so that he can directly affect the wiring inside. Mm. Oh dear, Traven, the the help is now, uh, the help is now breaking the ship. Raldar doesn't like that. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, can we can we stop this? What the fuck? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to have a roll here for uh, for Davis to see how well he does with this. Let's call this a... Uh, let's see. I'm going to set this to a... Uh, we'll make this a quick daring and engineering roll just because you might be about to uh, deal with a... Uh, some unwanted attention. Let's see how that goes. And let's make sure chat can see that. That is one success, so that's um, that's probably enough to at least pry open a panel and um, start, like, tapping at uh, some of the control systems. Um, but okay. Maybe not, like, not enough for Davis to do anything on his own. All right. Uh, you are gnawed, however, by curiosity, and you feel the compulsion to continue. Uh, Lynn, as you see this going on, um, or this inexplicable peeling away at the interior of the uh, at the interior conduits, what would you like to do? Uh, choke slam him. <laughs> I'm gonna like grab him and try and pull him away from the console. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to say that this is a daring plus security roll. Um, we'll call this a... Oh yeah, it is contested as always, so go ahead and give me a roll there. Alright, alright, uh, time to up my uh, complication range because of the talent. Oh boy, using wielding augmented ability. Yes. It's one of the greatest talents in the game. That's why it needs GM's permission. That is... GM? Three, wrong yes. sheet. You know. I was gonna ask, can I extend threat to contest? Uh, you may certainly contest, and I will spend... Uh, how much threat do you want to spend in order to contest? How much do you need? Uh, one for three dice, three for four, Six for uh, the total of five. Um, I'll just do one for now. Okay. The GM will, that exp I'll expend a point of threat and roll three dice here. Oh, I rolled the incorrect attribute, but that still applies here, because uh, that is supposed to be daring. Uh, but yes, so you match... Uh, Davis will match for three successes. However, um, because you have taken the initiative, Lynn, you do manage to just barely 
pull this uh, this Orion man away from the uh, away from the conduit. Everything well, that you've got. Technically, technically, Lynn got five successes. Ah, uh, that's that is right. I forget. It was augmented ability, wasn't it? Yes, augmented ability. Okay. In that case, you would gain back two points of momentum. Uh, which, Joe, I see you are presently holding, so if you would care to draw that at some point, unless you would rather uh, I can draw it. change that. You said one, right? Or two? Uh, that would be two points. Yeah. Lynn, while you are able to pull him away, it does feel like a much more much more strenuous event. This man has a bit more mass than you would guess for uh, someone with this very fleshy appearance. I see. Indeed one who... I want to make it clear that this man is five foot two. He is very tall. Also true. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this short... Uh, the short man uh, who, so far as you can tell, is not a, uh, well, it would be def tough to tell, but he's not marketing himself either as a commando or engineer. Uh, rather, uh, exotic dancer appears to be, like, able to struggle or root themselves a little more successfully. Um and for, uh, it's also worth noting that as you like try uh, the closer you try to pull him towards you and away from the console you are feeling like you're getting quite a headache over this whole process something about him being close is really giving you a problem maybe I should just kill him well, that, would be, that, that might solve that problem <laughs> Uh, Davis, any anything that you uh, want to try and do, or uh, do you, Ray? Do you want to act in some yeah. other way? You do not. And Lynn, Lynn is just like, what are you yes, doing? There are two things I want to do. <laughs> uh, in response to Lynn pulling him away, he levels her with a look that does not come across as anything other than just empty and uh oh my you're much stronger than I've really been. and with that I would like to both to knock her out oh dear well just as much as I can hmm well we'll, we'll see how this goes here I'm I'm going to say only because, uh, and in the, it, it, hmm, I'm thinking about this because having pulled him away, in most cases, I would say that almost counts as a grapple. But I don't think Lynn was necessarily prepared for that, or it was more of like a yanking uh, sort of motion. So maybe you're focused more on like hooking one arm. Um, so that'll allow a normal attack, uh, but yes. Uh, Davis, you can go ahead and try to do that. Um, I will roll another daring plus security roll for you here. Uh, would you like to have any particular, um, or would you want me to purchase an additional d20 with threat? Yeah. How much threat do we have to expect? I have 12 points of threat right now. Um, of which I could only spend up to six for the total increase in D20s. That being said, the GM does rather like having his threat and has other things to do with it, too, so... Oh, no, that's totally fair. I was just curious. I don't think I'm going to expend any threat. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right. No. We have a race, after all. Uh, so describe uh, with two successes. Describe to me uh, what is Davis attempting to do before uh, Lynn goes in, or like blocks and tries to respond herself. Uh, it's a calculated chokehold. So he goes straight for her throat with intentions of pretty much putting her in a uh, unconscious state, not killing her at all, just 
like he's done this a million times before and will do it again. Gotcha. Non-lethal attack then. Um, yeah. Lind, you... Uh, although this person's you... reflexes are extremely fast, uh, you also have a fair bit of training in these areas and are able to quickly respond yourself, so uh, you may roll daring plus security to uh, uh, to contest. That is another three successes, and uh, well, technically five because of the augmented ability uh, or augmented attribute here. So, uh, Lynn, you just managed to rush a hand in place. Uh, the it is a struggle, like inches from your neck. This man is applying like a constant, uh, almost like sort of mechanical pressure. It is bloody well near an unstoppable force that is pressing against you, and it, you feel like. <clears throat> every muscle in your arm engage uh, such that uh, refresh my memory in your own situation are we dealing with like is it just like mechanical bracing or are there uh, do you have like any sort of servo action going on in your own arm Lynn? Yeah. Uh, oh absolutely it is uh, dangerous amounts of cybernetic yeah uh, Traven, you are hearing all manner of mechanical noises between these two people as like uh, you look and you see that uh, Davis seems to be, like, with just the dullest expression, is going to try and choke out Lynn, but that she is, uh, she has not only caught the hand uh, between the fingers and thumb, but is able to uh, slowly start reversing it. So these are, these two are in quite the struggle here. Uh, you do... Uh, Do I get it? Calico heard? Well, before that, I was going to say, Caligo, you did technically succeed here, so you could uh, roll damage if you. Or, or rather, you I, could uh, counter uh, in some manner. There are melee options that would, that would fit here. I, I, I would, I would like to roll the unarmed strike damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like to treat this as? Let me double check the melee combat options. Would you like to uh, treat this as uh, in an effort to just immobilize, to um, to grapple? Are you trying to shove them away? Do you want to go for a strike with this that um, that just inflicts damage normally? How do you want to play it? I think it's going to be a strike because. Uh... Sadly, Lynn does not... Holding back is a problem. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, in that case, uh, your hands are occupied at the moment with one grasping the... Uh, grasping at the arm when you, were, for, when you were pulling Davis away, the other blocking and holding the other hand. So uh, tell me, how do you want to uh, fluff this before you, before you make the oh, roll? She she was going to do strike him with her knee. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Let me strike. So, so go ahead and roll me the strike damage there. That is six, seven points of uh, stress. Um, yeah, Lynn, the knee connects, and uh, it's not enough to cause a knockdown, but that is enough to do a bit of damage to uh, to Davis here. Uh, Davis, you're starting to think that you might be dealing with a situation very similar to your own. Fuck, excuse me. Time it cocks his head. His hand is still trying to go for your throat, by the way. Like, he's, he's firing out so much as just taking damage. Hmm. Eyes kind of shimmer a little bit, and uh, at which point, if it's okay, I would like to introduce the second character. Mm. Uh, well, bef before the before we do this, I will say uh, just to give him a chance. Traven, did you have anything that you wanted to try and do as uh, the 
this struggle is broken out between the two of you? Or, like, he, behind you? Yeah, I'm gonna pull out my communicator and I'm gonna say, uh, shipwide, I need Kresik, Hemok, and a small strike team on the elevator. Huh. Like, now. Betty, you hear this uh, emergency communication right away, and whilst you've been busy um, with everything else, you turn your attention to the elevator as they are coming onto the main deck. Um, and we'll go ahead and shift it to shift the scene to where uh, you guys are just like spilling out into the corridor. Uh, Tabak is actually just down the corner um, a little ways. Uh, or rather, down the corridor. Uh, but he's not really paying you much mind. Or he's not glancing in your direction yet. What a terrible captain. <laughs> Just the worst. Alright. Uh, at this absolute ridiculous debacle, comes falling out of the elevator, still fighting, uh... Betty's voice fills the area and says, Now what in the Sam Dickens is going on here? Can't y'all play nice? What are you doing on my ship? And she directs this at David. At which point Davis immediately drops his attempt to lock on to Lynn. Oh, very cool. I was just trying to find what they kept interrupt. Just a just to warn you a little, Ray, you are cutting out when volume drops below a certain point. I, I think we got that Davis saying God uh, damn it. Davis basically saying, There you are, I was looking for you, but I kept getting interrupted. Yes. Yeah. Alright. So Betty then uh, kind of, I don't know, her voice is loud. And, I don't know who told you you can get on our ship and toss all this wreckage, sweetheart, but it ain't gonna fly. You get the hell out of my house and then... And with that, uh... I... I kind of want David to shut down a little bit. Just not respond. And, uh... Do. I cannot do anything because I'm driving. Well, I'm going to let y'all take the lead because I'm driving. I mean, I would, if you'd like, uh, well, if you would like for uh, Betty to take the wheel in a sense, we could always expend the uh, the points of momentum on this situation. Uh, create the advantage. Yeah, I think that's fine. We can do that. Um, would you guys object to uh, all right guys nope all right um, go ahead but yeah we can we can have the shutdown uh, process happen for a while and allow you to focus on the driving there for a minute um, thank you I will, all right I will that's quite all right um, I will say that uh, after the last roll there um, where you had scored another five successes against their two. That means three points of momentum came in. So that would fill you up and give you one point of floating. But there's an advantage uh, Ray and I had discussed beforehand. And uh, as such, uh, if it's okay with you guys, we will spend those two points. Uh, so you will end up at five points in total of momentum. Your floating one is gone. And the uh, one from your pool is gone. Uh, one of the points from your pool is gone, so that'll be a total of five. Is where we are at, and Davis will uh, seemingly shut down for a moment. At, at which I'm done. <laughs> at which point, Tabaka comes back over, having heard Betty say something. Traven. What are you doing? Why And why is there no Ryan uh, man on my floor? And why are you uh, entangled up with him, Lynn? Well... Draven received orders to 
get entertainment for the crew. This is who he brought. And he tried to smash into our computer system. He, he glances uh, like there is an absolute scowl that overtakes Taybox's face as he glances. Uh, he starts with a look to you, Lynn. He looks to the Orion with further disdain. And then Traven, he looks to you with the utmost disdain. You wanted entertainment, you got it. I hope this boosts morale like you wanted it to. What are you talking about? I received a communication on planet side from both you and Azic telling me to grab somebody because morale on the ship just isn't good enough. So here it is. I have done There you go. I have done nothing of the sort. And the uh, the mere notion of it that the mere notion that I would make any such suggestion, let alone the hiring out of whatever this is, it insults my honor. If I did not value you for a cook, or if I were one of less control, I would kill you where you stand. You can value me on my word. The order came through. Your voice and Azik's voice. Look me in my eyes. They came through. Trust me. I've never been this infuriated before in my life. Tabok hey. gives gives you a very hard look. Uh, and go ahead there, Lynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lynn's going to start getting up. Wait. So, you did not also give me the orders to infiltrate the Creel ship? What? With, the, uh, with us being participants in this race with them? Absolutely not. To infiltrate them for... Uh, it's the implication that they would, uh, that I suggested sabotage? That would be a most dishonorable deed, if so. And I am... Uh, I would not conduct myself that way. You may not know me that well, Lynn, but Traven Lex most certainly should. He has served aboard my ship for uh, for a long enough time that if he does not know that by now, much as he knows that I would never give this sort of order, then he does not understand me at all. Well, given that this is not isolated, I'm starting to think that perhaps your communications may have been compromised. Yes, and it was very easy to do. Captain, sweetheart, we gotta talk. Uh, uh, and with that, is there any way to close off the captain from the rest of the crew? Um, not at present. They are all in a hallway. I, you know, there might be a way to seal off the... I suppose, and I may be corrected on this later... There could be a sort of transverse bulkhead setup that could shunt here. I would be prepared to uh, say that some sort of temporary uh, shunt occurs that uh, momentarily segments you guys off. Alright, I would like to have that happen and it just be Betty's voice talking to the captain. Alright, um, so let me just... Are we talking Tabok or Ezek? This would be. I'm talking to Tabok. Betty does not consider you captain. <laughs> That's fair. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it'll be it'll be easier for the execution later. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'm just temporarily. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and uh, in place of just a. Uh, bog standard sort of uh, like metal wall sort of thing I'm going to say that an emergency door pops up uh, like an emergency bulkhead suddenly clamps down at this point Traven, Lynn, the two of you are cut off and uh, Tabok finds himself alone that is to say that the with the voice of uh, Betty playing over his head uh, he, at this point, is looking up with his eyes closed and his uh, 
finger and thumb pinching at the bridge of his nose. Oh, no good honorable deeds in this cosmos go unpunished, it seems. All right, all right, you big baby. Ever since we lost my beloved Croker, things have been a little different. And I know you've noticed. But the truth of the matter is, they've been a lot worse since this race has been declared. I do not think that Asic is in its right mind about this. And while I will not disobey your order, I am not prepared to listen to his. Do you understand? Oh, God, did I die? Am I dead? Nope, nope. Ah! I, my my own mic was muted. Asic, uh... Oh, okay. As it, uh, like, rubs his forehead. Which, you mean Tabak? Tabak, yes. Uh, which, just to check here, just to make sure uh, I didn't mute it at a certain point. Did, uh, did you hear the, uh, the no good and honorable deed goes unpunished bit? I... Yes, I did. Yes, okay, I good. Did. Uh, I responded to that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um. Uh, uh, <sighs> Oh. This this Azek is not of uh, is not of the mind that you would have known or that Croker would have understood. His no. Sorry, go ahead. His mind is one that, admittedly, I do not firmly understand, but nonetheless, I deem him as suitable for command, and that should be enough for you, Betty. Indeed, for all of the crew. It is my will, and even when that will goes astray, that is not ours. Uh... Tell me, Betty, in Croker's time, did you ever read the Desh Ah? To be honest, his pastimes were his. I kept my own during those times. We were, you can't hear it. I mean, you can't see her, but she she kind of has a smile in her voice. We, we're different people, but, but we love each other in our way. And I feel like I haven't, I regret never telling him that. So I wanted you to know that he loved you. Tabak is briefly... Oh, good. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. In a way that her has also helped hold, at least in his honor. Hello? Did I die? Yeah. No, 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 no. You're still here. I am... Uh, I think that audio is just delayed at a certain point, so we're, we sometimes step on each other's words. Oh, oh go, okay. Go ahead and finish your bit there, Ray. Okay. So, so what I wanted to say was, while I will take your word, I will accept that you, this is your will, but I want you to acknowledge the effect this is having on your crew and my family. None of them are happy. Have you seen Traven that angry before? I sure haven't. That boy is all joy and sunshine, and right now he's full of fighters. I don't like it. Well, as I understand now, it, that... the other half. <laughs> Don't you interrupt me. Got the other members of the crew in the mess hall. I was not going to let them out without your say-so, but I did want you to consider that none of them are enthusiastic about this race, with the exception of the newer Asic. The one with two arms. So I want you to think real good and hard before I unlock those doors. You hear me? Tabak looks off kind of into the middle distance uh, pondering it. Says, Betty, before you open these doors, I do just want to note 
Traven is upset because of orders he believes that I have given and that I know for a fact I have not. The same seems to apply to Azek. I have not given any Azek orders, but I have given orders as Azek as well as yourself. I was hoping to belay them, but I did not anticipate that they would be bringing an Orion android onto this ship to cause havoc. A what? Oh, was that not obvious? Oh, sweetheart. We gotta work on your eyesight. We gotta we gotta establish some clues here. Okay, sweetheart, that's an android, and you need to watch out. Because it... that boy's fast. Open I was watching. Open these <laughs> doors right now. Immediately she opens the doors. Yep. Uh, so the, the bulkheads reopen. Traven, Lynn, after a few moments, however you were trying to react to deal with things, uh, Traven, um, or well, Tabok, just glances at the android, his disruptor out. Betty, is that thing operational right now? At the moment, I think it's doing internal repair. But, I do not want you to get rid of it. I have an idea. Uh, sweetheart, Traven, I know you're probably a little bit miffed at me right now, but I was trying to save us a little bit from, uh, one, some embarrassment. We are not fit to race. Two, some, you know, losing our life situation. But I need you to do me a favor. I don't have any hands. And yours are the best on the ship. Don't tell Raldar I said that. I don't play favorites with my children. <sighs> Traven, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Oh, you're so mad. <sighs> I need you to drag that android to the nearest panel. Preferably the one he opened up. And I need you to start doing some wiring for me. What are your orders, Captain? I don't like the idea of this thing uh, being, wi uh, being connected manually into the ship. And then Tabok thinks well, it over. Mm. Sorry, so, go ahead. I must say that I have may not be familiar with this particular model of android, but I, uh, I do know that some Orion ships carry them. And with, uh, with due respect to my cook, I trust him with my food and with the uh, with it work at his scientific instruments, he says, giving uh, Traven a slap on the arm. Um, but for mechanical work, I would be best here. And if I have the proper memory of these androids, at least what has been marketed, they should have a transmitter. Betty, you have clearly overridden the, uh, the lockout from the subsystem, uh, or rather from the uh, sub uh, subcomponent that I had your program in, and uh, you've managed to tie into the communications, have you not? That would be correct, sweetheart. Uh, I think I know wh uh, why you wanted to be connected in. This is... But, uh, like, as he goes towards a, what appears to be some sort of uh, panel on the... Or, or rather, a uh, segment of... Uh, uh, like somewhere on the like the back of his neck. I think I know what you might be looking to do. I'm going to ask. Will you heed my judgment and my orders, and the orders of those I deem necessary, uh, I deem necessary and worthy of doing so? I 
I made a vow to someone that is no longer here that I would protect you and that I would love you in his absence. That is a vow I'm willing to fulfill. I will listen to everything you say going forward. And as much as I love this body I'm in currently, you can't see it, but she's like mentally gesturing to the ship. I do miss... I do miss my curling iron. As much as you like your, uh, as much as you like the yawn, I would much rather have you in a body that is much more contained and who, uh, that I do not depend on for this. He says, tapping into what he knows to be a subdermal transmitter, and modulating it, spe- whoop, modulating it specifically to uh, the frequency that you can use for communication purposes. Uh, I am spending Tavox um, value on this one. This damned machine will do as I wish it. Um, in order to re-roll, and I'm just going to take that first d20 that I rolled there, so that is three successes, that is enough to create the advantage, and Betty, that is also, well, for the players, that is enough to give you guys the uh, last point of, or rather, a sixth point of momentum. Um, so, Betty, the line is open, the door uh, the door is there, and uh, you can begin your upload. Rather. She steps through that door yep. and goes on her way towards another body. Yep. And uh, while Davis is still conducting self-repair, he taps a few uh, he taps a few buttons on his comm panel. You may not be able to move right now, but you will hear this. Traven, Lynn, come with me. Uh, he'll also press the. Uh, press the nearest button for ship wide uh, anyone who is not currently in the mess hall report there immediately he is adding you doctor <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so with with that handled uh tabak will be here in a moment but we're, we're going to shift over to the mess hall um where like you have been you've all been locked in for a few minutes uh controls have not responded betty has not been talking to you uh dar is uh getting gach everywhere at his end of the table um azik this the strategy meeting has turned into um just an absolute mess Yes, yes, it has. Any anyone want to do or say anything before uh, before the others join in? Azik, how much longer? We've been waiting for so long, and I'm bored. Well, I, you know, our chances of winning this thing are going down at every second that computer system has us trapped in here. So it's it's kind of up to it, not not me. So I don't know what it wants us to do. Obviously, it and it knows systems and lockouts that I don't know, and I guess it shows the true level of trust our captain has for me. Why don't we kill it? That'd be my thought, but obviously the captain wants it there for a reason. You are the captain. Admiral, then Tavok. When he's on board, when he's ship? on board, when he's on board, he has ultimate say because this ship, tech, this ship belongs to him. And how many times has he put us to dangerous ends with no real? chance at honor or glory. A few. But uh, this definitely would have would have been a better another opportunity for me to prove myself and us to prove ourselves in in the line of, of duty of fun ish. Uh, at this point, Azik, the doors open and through the doors comes Tabak, Traven, Lynn, 
and uh, trailing just behind them after being called from his sickbay, uh, Kresik. Uh, Tabak. The please. moment the oh, go ahead. the moment the doors open, I'm gonna make a beeline for it, and so I'll probably end up running into whoever's whoever's there, but. Uh, because would I have heard the, the all call for everybody to into the mess hall? Um, I, I'm going to say that the... Uh, you know, I'm going to say that Betty didn't... Uh, in her last bit of exertion, she conveniently set it to... Um, conveniently set the, uh, the... We'll just say no. Production error happened, and you guys didn't hear it. Okay. So yeah, uh, the moment the door is open, Azik's gonna make a run for it, yep. and uh, Taybok steps through and is like, "Captain, I see your meeting is going well." Um, glancing over to Dar, who is uh, slurping uh, stuff out of the bucket and just like, <laughs> just it's getting everywhere on the floor, on the table, in uh, Nogri's mug. Um, there was cool cleaned Rotten water. In it. It. <laughs> yep. If there was cool clean yes. water, it is no longer. Yes, it seems that your computer system pet has decided to uh, lock us in here because they didn't. It didn't approve of my decision to get us into this this opportunity and this this race so instead of working with me on the the complications they decided to essentially become captain and lock me in here us in here yeah. Tabak pauses and uh, nods for a moment uh, going into full monologuing stride Yes, yes. The risk that you took. With our crew, my ship, and for, uh, and with a not inconsiderable amount of Darsex. The decision was a rash one. Maybe even a foolish one. But Betty did not have that right to say otherwise. Nor can we ignore the challenge placed before us. As he start, uh, Tabak starts stepping around the table. Some of you have been here long. Others have only known uh, service for my house briefly. If there's, nothing, if there's anything else you should understand, uh, and these words pointedly, you can, you also feel Betty being linked in uh, by comms are how seriously I take the precepts of our culture of Klingon culture Nidesh Ah the fourth precept is to seek adversity to find something some challenge and defeat them in an appropriate manner this race we have found ourselves in. This, oh, this is a challenge. This is many layers of challenge. For each and every one of us. For this ship. For us as a crew. This is a great obstacle. That fir uh, the first precept. To choose your enemies well. This race, it is a worthy foe in its own right. To complete it will grant us victory in and of itself. To truly win would be glorious. Captain Azik has chosen this adversity. For whatever reasons uh, we have come to it, he has found us a good fight. And this is a fight. This is a battle for each and every one of us. For each and every one of our talents, we shall be challenged. We 
will have uh, we will face down terrible terrible odds even to survive what we have but that does not mean just because of this her uh, this terrible challenge because of the cruelty of a cosmos that forces it upon us that does not mean that we stop that we shy from no, we do everything we can to win, to gain a victory. Now, Captain Essek, you are still as competent a pilot as any we have on this ship. I would trust you to be able to navigate whatever challenges we have. Would you feel up to that still? Standing over oddly very close to the door, um, I will, yeah, I will uh, uh, say, yeah, I am, I am best qualified at the helm, and this crew is the best qualified to to support me. We'll support each other. Very good. You will have to pull double duty and command for, uh, and command from the con section. You may pick someone else to support you as needed. As for the rest, Raldar, he says, looking at you, I presume that you've already been plotting damage control and response to systems? Affirmative. Whatever hands you have here, I will be joining you. I will work alongside you. But this is your engine room. What you say will go. I will appreciate your expertise. You're the only other person here who knows this ship as well as I. Not as a, in your discussions, had you decided who would be handling sensors and communications? Uh, Vo, Vo probably would be on sensors. Um, I suggest Hemok you... would be on tactical. Sensible choices. I would suggest uh, keeping our uh, our good cook on to doing that. Also, Azik, I would uh, advise uh, reviewing and belaying any orders that might have been made in your name, say, within the past. He checks this chronometer. Plot appropriate level of time. Uh, then he turns to you. Traven. With. Uh, I. Ex eh, while you're. Uh, I suspect you will be of some value if you wish to uh, engage some duties on the bridge. This may be an opportunity that. Uh, you uh, The opportunity you've been asking me about to prove your value in this situation. Would you be willing to face this adversity alongside us. I will. And unfortunately, it is too late to belay that order, Captain. I've already begun increasing the morale of everybody on this ship. Hmm. And by doing so, I was able to acquire a shipment of Rakdagino beans, so we will be fully hopped up a Rakdagino the whole time we race. And hopefully, if we do good enough, will have a proper deal with an agricultural company. That's not healthy. Well, Doctor, I trust you can look after all of your patients here. Mm. Between the damage we might sus uh, that we could sustain along the way and the a uh, possibility of dishonorable opponents, I would feel most comfortable with your uh, with your surgeon's uh, kit and skills at our side. I will be ready. Very good. Well, this task is difficult. If we stand and work with each other, we will succeed. Do not doubt that. I will be beside you for all of this. 
and we will uh, we will succeed if we work together and we accept the guidance and leadership of a captain that I have come to trust says Clancy to Isaac. yeah sounds alright that being said, I am giving one order uh, before we prepare. Traven, see to it that uh, Dar is uh, cleaned up and uh, that it, he has a proper table placement. So he's getting the, the mess is getting everywhere. <laughs> like just the there is an increasing uh, like puddle of um, of just gawk debris uh, spreading out. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna yeah, let's start making yeah, just it, it, really it's impressive the bucket was actually that dense um, but yeah it's just it's getting everywhere I will teach him about more civilized way of eating hmm Binge. So, with that, uh, and since Tabox given his speech, he just uh, it, like chest uh, chest out, arms at his side. Says, "Well, once you tend to that, we must all prepare to our other duties." We've got a race to win. Hopla! 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 All right. Hopla. So, as with some modicum of uh, morale brought up uh, amongst the crew, uh, question would go to the... uh, Question to the group here. Would any of you guys like scenes before we actually get to the race? Or uh, do maybe just a brief blurb on anything that you would want to do to prepare? Ractagino. Gotcha, gotcha. Azek would probably discuss in private with DuPont about our friendly computer system um how concerning it was that they locked us out and have him run uh system diagnostics to uh prevent that from happening in the future Mm -hmm. tabak is actually going to uh as he passes uh, out of the room in order to go tend to his other tasks he's going to let you know that Betty will not be uh, troubling the ship systems uh, anytime soon. Um, that or that he has uh, the two of them have come to a novel solution on the matter. Um, that being said, uh, they've picked up another um, another entity on the crew, and that they must strive to not be so alarmed or too alarmed over this situation. Uh, so going on down the list uh, Raldar, is there anything in particular that you would want to do over these next hours? Uh, I think he's pretty good just working Gotcha, gotcha Um, Kresik, is there anything that you would want to do in the uh, time to prepare for the race? Um, Does he have a copy of the race's flight path? Yes, he does. Are there any um, stellar hazards that could harm the crew medically? There absolutely are. Um, So, upon tapping the... uh, Let me just find the right map here. Okay. So, upon tapping into a uh, pad that includes the Ketlog track, uh, you find... Your current position of Master Cal, um, that the the first circuit will take you about 1.9 Hlokham, um, which is a 
certain number. I want to say it's uh, basically uh, almost. Uh, I want to say that Lolcom is about 2.8 light years. Uh, so it's so, uh, that just gives you a little perspective for the for the situation. Uh, that first one will take you to an uh, basically a dwarf star system. Uh, in what the what the Klingons refer to as the, um, just just finding the note on that. Uh, that first stage would be in the what the Klingons refer to as the Goruch Yukme, uh, or roughly broken worlds. Uh, that'll probably be less of a concern for you uh, because the um, the hazards there deal more with. Uh, basically asteroids and if the ship were to crash or uh, suffer damage there then uh, well chances are that's decompressions uh, symptoms which you know that's that's always the risk you run with a spatial hazard um, of greater concern would be in the second part of the loop which would take you into uh, a basically a micro nebula formation uh, that location runs about. I'm going to get this set here. That's, that's not that tool. Not that tool. My my distance tool has disappeared. Ah. Um, a secondary lo. Uh, the second location um, would be a micro nebula where it is apparently host to a, a subspace corridor of sorts. Uh, chances are there's going to be considerable radiation, uh, plasma currents, all manner of other uh, unfortunate things. The hull and shields such that they would function will um, probably screen that out, but if you get a little too close to anything, there's radiation hazards there. Uh, the final stage is probably the most concerning because... Uh, the subspace corridor will put you in very close range of a neutron star, putting you just a little ways off at the uh, corner of that uh, of a sector on the far end, and uh, you essentially have a slingshot course that you need to pull in order to uh, in order to complete the course. Uh, in that case gravitational forces could threaten the ship uh, that's a situation again where there's not much that you can do if the ship is torn apart uh, the the sort of affairs that i think that you'd expect across the board would be if they push the ship too hard various system failures blowouts shrapnel you know the the rocks and uh, fire that shoot out from every part of the ship that could be the biggest hazards, basically. Um, you know, all of the terrible things about uh, flying around in a spaceship. If you, gotcha. channel, if you channel your inner McCoy. So I think what Kresik would do, there's a lot that he can't control right now. There's a lot that he can't prep for right now, other than be ready with a triage kit. Uh, but what he can do is he can whip up some uh, anti-radiation cocktails uh, for the second leg of their trip, which should help them get a little bit closer and skirt a little bit nearer to some of these places that the other ships might have to uh, tread a little bit more cautiously around uh, without the crew having any negative effects. Mm hmm Sensible, sensible. So essentially, I would show you trying to create an advantage for that second leg of the um, of the race. I gotcha. I'll I may give you that opportunity uh, during the during the race here. I will say, broadly speaking, um, Tabak will recall the other Klingons that uh, have been on the ship, um, although they are of only marginal use. Uh, he figures that they can be put to very simple damage control tasks at the start. Um, so I will just say that you guys, uh, at a point that uh, if you are attempting some sort of very basic task uh, that involves uh, damage response or really anything where you would need to respond, uh, you would gain an additional 
uh, I'd say at least an additional d20, and I will even grant a focus on that uh, regardless, just to show that you have um, that you have a uh, bonus help, and it won't go. It won't get counted towards the momentum limit, so you could conceivably buy a fourth d20 with a single point of momentum or threat if it came to it. Fair. Very fair. Hearing, yes, hearing no dispute, I will uh, we'll go on from there. Um, so let's see, Traven is running the wrecked Gino. Uh, let's see. Ray would, oh, uh, well, Betty is uh, presently uploading. Uh, uh, I have a question, if that's okay. Go right ahead. Is there any way I can make the wrecked Gino have a special benefit for the crew? I suppose that we could always add, like, uh, if you want to create an advantageous trait, then maybe... Uh, tell you what. If you want to expend the two points of momentum or perform a task to just create an advantage, uh, then I will give you the opportunity to give everyone the alert trait, which will basically say that uh, because you have a good tasty blend of Ractogeno that you're drinking, anyone who partakes of it will get the opportunity to be attentive to their work and re-roll a single d20 uh, once in their rolls. If I'd they... love to do a task. Alright, then go ahead uh, let's see, give me a, let's call this uh, control plus science to brew an Excellent pot of wrecked Gino. Uh, would I get my cooking focus? Yes, you would. Uh, what's the complication range? Uh, complication range will be limited to one on this. Okay. With two successes, that is sufficient to create the advantage. Uh, so anybody who wishes to... Uh, I'm presuming basically it is everyone but uh, Kresik. You know, given that, that is correct. Yep. Everyone but Kresik may, uh, or like, so long as you think that your character would enjoy some racked Gino, you may take a uh, a new trait that will be alert, and basically you may uh, re-roll a single D twenty for free one time. Uh, Gotcha. I'll I'll supply people with uh, traits. Just if you if you just create it and type in alert, I will have the rules copied to you. Um, Could I use a momentum by chance to keep that as a recipe? Yeah, I'll let you save it into your repertoire, and I will accept the point of momentum as a uh, as something to uh, let you keep a note of that. So that should be a total of five right now. Mm, All right. Recipes. Yeah. Anything else that uh, anyone wants to do for preparation right now? Um, Zional, who is staying on board the station, because he wasn't asked to do anything, uh, uh, is placing bets using Croker's money. Very good, very good. Uh, let me... I can briefly uh, throw people onto the uh, onto the station. Let me just get this set up. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah. So, Zionel, while the while the crew is at work, uh, yeah, while the crew is uh, like busily working and. Uh, you know, all the good... Uh, you've finished supervising all of the goods that you'd want to uh, have transferred. Um, Zionel is true to form, uh, arranging for a... what he hopes to be a fairly hefty payday. Uh, some... Uh, some portion of his Darsex or Latinum uh, put forward on the on winning, others on it just surviving. 
Uh, what do you think the split would be, so far as Zynel's concerned? I would say his money is on the on surviving. The money that he liberated from Crocur is on the on winning. I see, I see. Because so. that's just free money. Uh, he does trust the on well enough. But he's going to hedge his bets on the money that's actually his. Very good. Okay. So, uh, some time will continue. And, or rather, uh, some time. Yeah, go ahead. And then the other thing that he's going to do, and this can just be handled in the background, we can come back to it, mm -hmm. is um, he would have received um, those things that Kresik was wanting to look into that I messaged you about. And so while the race is ongoing, he's going to start looking into if he can track down any leads on those items. Indeed, indeed. And I think that we might be able to resolve some of that at the tail end of this adventure. Um, <clears throat> but while all of that's continuing, I think that we'll go ahead and skip forward in time. Uh, questions would be, does anybody else want any sort of scene or want to tend to anything else either uh, on the ship, on the station, amongst anyone? Uh, you know, if you want to do things before the race starts, now is your moment. I think Azric's good to go. Race time. All right. Uh, then let me just apportion out characters into uh, their proper posts right now. <clears throat> okay. So, we cut back some hours into the future, into deep space, to a navigational buoy that hovers uh, illuminated by distant stars and by the lights emitted on either end, and a cluster of ships that have assembled for a great race. Uh, the the Mastical Ket Log uh, that you are all preparing to embark upon. Uh, at, at this point, uh, the crew is situated. Uh, we'll taking a look at where the uh, where the yawn is placed. Let me just move some things around. Um, Azik, on the bridge of the ship, you are listening on the audio as the station commander gives a stirring speech. There we go. You listen as the station commander gives a very stirring speech to the effect of uh, how the... Uh, basically how this great competition will test every resource, will test your crews, and that you are about to embark upon a grand challenge. Um, oh, uh, with the volume on that momentarily down, um, you look around the stations, Chemok, uh, Traven, and Vopri have taken their positions, respectively. Um, I'll say manning a secondary system right now, um, the, the captain's daughter is also present for the race. Um, which, in a moment of uh, clarity, you might realize Tabok may not have been happy not just bringing the ship into the situation, but to cast his family into a certain peril. I should assign her to something. Uh, Captain, I mean, sen uh, sensors are fully functional. Um, uh, communications should also be available. Okay. So, would you like me to check in with engine room or in sick bay or anything? Yeah, yeah. check in with engine room. Um, Traven, where do you feel comfortable being being uh, thrown? 
Is it possible to get remote access to sensor readings in the mess hall, by chance? Uh, I, 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 I could arrange that, but I, I, why didn't you want to be here on the bridge with us? I'm going to be walking back and forth. I just want to make sure I always have sensor data to be able to read while I'm doing other things. Uh, oh, okay. I, I won't try to uh, route it to a console there, display on any uh, readings there. Uh, checking, I'll check in around the systems. Uh, 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 Vopri, at what bridge to all all other stations. Uh, uh, engine room and then sick bay report, please. Engine room. Uh, down in the uh, down in the engine room. Uh, Tabak is looking over the uh, is looking for the impulse engines, uh, making sure that the uh, that they are set for efficient uh, configuration. Whilst you are looking over the. Uh, matter antimatter flow rates setting up the warp engines. Uh, power is presently at maximum. Uh, Nagri and Kelsha are also around helping on damage control. Uh, at, at engine room, we, we copy you. Is everything all set? Everything is running optimally. Oh, okay. We're well report. Uh, uh, sick bay. Uh, anything that uh, uh, everything all okay down there? Everything is fine. Oh. I am prepared to deal with the bodies when they arrive. Oh. Do not cause them. Hey, hey, I, 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 I would, I would never cause the the bodies to come down. No, oh, not me. Uh, Vopri, good. Vopri just, Vopri assuring you, he will be the goodest boy. Uh, uh, Captain. Transporter room reads that uh, uh, we are all uh, we are also prepared there. Uh, all system, uh, all primary systems are set. Clamox uh, uh, says, "Oh yeah, um, I've, uh, if we need them to, uh, I've got all the weapons ready. You know, shields are fine. Disruptors, they work. Uh, we can fire torpedoes too. We've got torpedoes." That won't be necessary for now, but good thing they're, they're locked and loaded and we're ready to go. How much time before the race starts? Uh, as you hear that, the or as you say, as you make that uh, particular comment, Azek, the, uh, the booming voice of the station commander comes out. Prepare yourselves! You may initiate engines on uh, at our mark. Wedge, cha, wa, yeshuv, and with that, uh, the vessels around you all jump to warp. We uh, too late to go to the bathroom now, folks. Uh, Isaac, you you want to take him to warp then? Oh yeah, you said you said everybody went to warp, so I thought I, we did too. I said everyone uh, around you did. Oh, Bro, we are <laughs> losing already. <laughs> yeah, go to warp. All right. Uh, let's let's. Uh, as as a famous Federation captain said, punch it. All right, uh, Azik, to open us up, this will be a control plus con roll. Uh, with a um, uh, just a difficulty of one. However, every point of power you expend to, uh, well, in going to warp you must expend points of power and in particular you uh, 
you your warp factor maxes out at the amount of power that you expend. Uh, bearing in mind, you w may need it later. So, yep. how, how much... Um, how fast do you want to go? Uh, let's let's head up to what we got a max of what five. Uh, I think that the on could tap or could top out at about six. Yeah, let's go five. Uh, play it safe for now. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking over the the remaining ships here. And we do have five uh, momentum. I'm going to spend one of them to give myself an extra a third uh, d20. All right. Uh, let me see. Hang on. No technical problem and. Contest increased by difficulty due to uh, environmental conditions. That'll come later. Yep, okay, we're good. All right. Uh, let's see. So that is two successes. So that gives you back one more point of momentum. Uh, Why didn't three die drop with that? That was weird. Yeah, that is odd. Um, hang, did you meant to... Hang on. Oh, I see, I see. I... Uh, I actually have been noticing a similar uh, issue with the with the sheet there. So try uh, try rolling that again. Uh, let's see. There, that worked. Uh, well, tell you what, I will instead of taking that complication, I'll just take the thirteen that you rolled with the single d twenty. So that succeeds. So that will be three successes giving you, uh, refilling your pool uh, back to six points of momentum. Darn, Betty was really hoping for that complication. Yeah. Speaking of, Betty should be coming online, uh, back online here if, uh, if things are convenient for you, Ray. Things are, like, the most convenient. <laughs> uh, I guess Betty powers up, saves the system. Oh. Um, so we'll let's we'll have a scene there very quickly, and um, I'll I'll say that uh, let's see. I'll uh, just to keep things uh, I think to keep things as simple as possible. We'll allow for a single scene between um, between session or rather between challenges. If you guys want another scene, then you can expend momentum. Uh, I think one thing will be fine. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, in part to have kept his eye on you um, and Raldar, if you had asked him about this, he will admit that uh, no, he wasn't sure of what he was doing on this, but he much preferred to keep uh, to be able to keep an eye on everything. Uh, what I'm going to say, Tabok, is... Or rather, what I'm going to say, uh, Betty, is that as this... Uh, as the Davis construct uh, begins to rouse, as uh, you find uh, functionality coming back online, you'll find yourself uh, leaning against a panel in the engine room um, at a point strategically far away from any other sort of independent data tap uh, with, it seems, a segment of panel that has been reinforced uh, to keep it drilled into the uh, into the wall and where the one thing between you and the nearest computer would be Tabak himself, who is, as usual, wearing a disruptor and mechleth on him. Yes. Uh, she staggers before trying to write herself fully. Oh, this what? is new. I don't know about this. Oh my god, was that my voice? It's horrible. <laughs> she, she, she reaches out for a table. 
Oh, I think I need a minute here. Um, I don't want you to see me like this. Where's, where's Kirkus Kirk quarters? I don't know where I am. Well, at present they are occupied. Otherwise, that being said, I, well, I suppose I will. We will have to provision for you. We did have a guest move out recently, so. That can be done properly. He sniffs the air a little bit. Mm. Definitely separate quarters. You smell like an oh. Orion woman. Oh, is that what that is? I have no control over that yet. Give me, give me some time, sweetheart. Mm. This is weird. I heard some pleasure models were uh, imbued with uh, pheromone repositories. She clapped her chest like you just said the worst thing to me. Sweetheart, I am not that kind of girl and this is no longer that kind of man. We're moving on. Don't ever say those words to me again. And she staggers down the hall trying to find the quarters. Yeah, you'll, also, you'll hear... Trying to intern- yeah. Sorry, Ta- go ahead. Yeah, Tabak will just, uh, as you uh, as you stagger towards the door, oh, believe me, I had no intention of using any part of you in any manner like that. Maybe say it a little bit nicer next time. I am in a state. She's crying as she walks out the door trying to get away from you. Great show. Raldar. Yes. Do you ever regret signing up on this ship? Uh, hard to say. Hmm. Hard I, to say. He he pauses a moment. I know the sensation. I also know we can win this. Uh, tapping on a console, bridge. We should be able to restore some power. One. Uh, Whilst uh, in flight here, I'd say probably regenerate a, a at least two or three points of power uh, just from dropping out of warp. The, mm, uh, we might be able to allow for just a simple reset of our power uh, for each challenge, provided we expend, say, two points of momentum in order to uh, do this. Well, we should have op- ample opportunity to earn it back once we actually make it to the asteroid field. Uh, based on the, what I saw of the challenge, it looks like uh, thrusters would be the only advisable way to try and clear that course. Back on the bridge, Agreed. where you are subjected Agreed. to Metaspeak. Agreed. Uh, I'll... I'll, I'll... So, you guys want to uh, jump into the first part of the asteroid challenge, then? Heck yeah! Do it. All right. So, uh, the the yawn is uh, following at warp. Uh, you found that uh, the yawn was just a hair behind uh, some of the ships. Most of them appear to have matched you at a uh, basically. Um, effectively warp 5 uh, I would say that a Klingon and Sulaban ship uh, both tried to push it just a little further uh, but you are all kind of at distances um, you're all basically at distances uh, to where you aren't uh, like you wouldn't be on visual with anyone right now the distances are just that fast uh, but as the yawn drops out of uh, drops out of warp, the exterior of the asteroid field, uh, we'll go ahead and switch screens over. Okay, uh, Vopri uh, looks over his sensors and says, mm, uh, "Captain, there there is a course that can be." Charted through the nebula, uh, rather through the asteroid cluster, uh, we are 
They have dropped out of warp nearest the first beacon and uh, have received uh, the, the coded transmission from uh, from it that will allow us to proceed. As a reminder of the objectives, we must uh, encounter each beacon in sequence. So uh, every every time that uh, uh, well, we have to pass by them in order. We cannot bypass one in the hopes of or if we hope to complete the race properly. All right. Well, set course for uh, beacon number one. Then. I'm plotting it into your uh, computer now. All right. Asik, uh, before you the, uh, lies the asteroid field. Uh, you must conduct an extended task with the helm uh, to navigate through the asteroid field. Uh, you may use either thrusters or impulse. Um, I'm going to say at the start, since you've expended the momentum necessarily eh, bleh, necessary to do so, your power is completely restored. Uh, that being said, you have... Um, let's see. You have a... Uh, uh, well, if you use your thrusters to... Um, if you use thrusters, it will not extend power. If you use impulse engines, however, it will. Uh, impulse engines do operate at an increased complication range in this field. This is an extended task that you are about to undergo. Okay. Uh, can I use my talent of flyby... When I attempt a con task that has increased difficulty due to environmental conditions or damage to the engines, reduce the difficulty by one to a minimum of one. I, you know, I will let that apply because the uh, the task is going to uh, is going to pose a bit of a risk to you here. Um, let me let me just go back to my notes on this. Make sure that I have everything right. Okay, so first phase. Right. So let's see. This would be a. Uh, this would actually only be a magnitude of two. So the difficulty on this task will be two. Okay. I'm going to use one of our momentum for an increased die to three, giving a, leaving us two left. All right. Control and con again. Correct. Uh, the work track on this will be... Sorry, just finding my notes here. Okay. Work track on this is... I should have... Looks like some things got erased here. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm just having to go back over this. Okay. Work track on this will only be 10, but resistance is going to be quite a thing here. Uh, so let's see. First, let's uh, let's resolve this. Uh, Azik, for this first task here, you are going with uh, thrusters or impulse? Impulse. Okay. Uh, so that, uh, let's see, well, I suppose that you didn't actually have a, uh, you didn't have a complication there. The ship does also have to roll there as well, um, and the, that is engines plus con, and to run that, that is going to be, um, sorry, trying to, I'm trying to find where I had the complication range mentioned on that. Okay. Uh, the complication range is two for this roll. So I need to roll again then. Uh, the for those two? for the for the ship. Somebody needs to grab the ship. The ship. Okay. Uh, if I pour the rack to Gino in the fuel tank, does that mean it has alert? Uh, no, it does not. Darn That's, it! That is uh, that that. You ever you ever try pouring coffee into a uh, into your car? 
It makes me go faster, right? Oh, my sweet summer child. As a car mechanic, I can confirm that it does, as long as that coffee is a is a ten to one ratio of uh, moonshine and coffee. Where ten is moonshine? Uh, mental damage. Uh. Uh, you might have to replace the O rings after, but still. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just damn. Okay. So uh, let's see. Just making sure I've got all my ships in line here. So uh, let's see. First would be. Okay. I'm conducting simultaneous rolls on that. Uh, so if somebody could take care of the ship for me, please, then I can. Um, or we can get into the work being done here. Baldar always takes care of the ship. Well, some somebody volunteered. The GM is busy. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get to the cage. Gotcha, gotcha. What does the ship need? It needs engines plus um blah. Engines plus con with a complication range of two because the uh, impulse engines are being used. I see, I see. Okay. Zero. All right, so uh, you soar, uh, you zip into the asteroid field. Uh, Azic, I'm going to ask you to roll the work for me here, which I am going to say uh, it would, I will give you Let's see, it was going to be a base two, plus your uh, discipline uh, in con, which, correct me if I'm wrong, that should be five. Uh, discipline, you said? Yes. Yeah, discipline is five. And then, since you are also using the impulse engines, uh, I am going to give you an additional uh, three points of dice, or uh, three uh, challenge dice here, so... In total, you are actually rolling ten, 10 challenge dice. Oh boy. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that will be resisted by half of that or by five points uh, yeah by five points of resistance because this is a dense asteroid field and you are having to navigate quite a bit uh, so that will that will still put six points on the work track which is enough for a breakthrough uh, while you guys are doing that uh, let's let me just conduct a couple of rolls here That's bad for the lucky star. Uh, okay. Well, I rolled the horn of Mavag in the in the clear, so you'll see them. That one didn't quite work. Let's, let's try that. Well, no. Let's just see. So, engines and con. Did they make a ten? No, did they did not. Those were elevens. Uh, collector will roll next. So that is okay. Dreams of avarice. And... Yeah. I will say, guys, I am sorry that I uh, have not quite been able to automate all of this. I, I have earnestly been trying, but it's it's a very difficult process, and I am not the most proficient with coding. Um, so let's see. The one point eight interlink. And 
Sorry, just make sure. Okay, that is a 13 that they rolled there, so that's it. Yeah, the complications are broken on that one. And they actually should have succeeded with the ship there, because that is a 5 on the die. And, uh, yeah, just apparently no systems were actually selected for that. Lovely. Okay, uh, Jank is coming in with the, with the first one. Uh, I'm going to see how the racers progress with exception I think to uh, let, me, let me double check okay now everyone does still make it the lucky star however is going to suffer a complication so let me conduct two more rolls here just to see how that goes That is the wrong broken version of that, so that I'll just. Uh, I'm going to have to do some fixing for this, but we'll we'll tend to that later. So what I'm I'm going to arbitrarily uh, just set off some things here. I'm going to do this by hand right now just to handle it. The GM's vaulting ambition uh, comes to haunt him. All oh, right. So let's see. Uh, you begin zipping right into the field uh, with the the yawn uh, entering in um, and just barreling right through the. Uh, the array of items in the field. Um, so the, with the rough course plotted along here, you just immediately start cutting down the path in, uh, in small increments. Um, nobody else was uh, initially, I'll say, brave enough to try and, uh, try and manage the run at impulse power. Uh, but you have decided to, uh, like, Azek, you are throwing caution right to the wind. Um, let's see here. So, moving on your, uh, moving on your heels, uh, and I'd say, uh, well, they're initially on your heels, but they don't quite keep up the, uh, the bird of, uh, the bird of prey, the, um, let's see here, sorry guys. You need something from me? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just uh, I'm dealing with some automation failures with the uh, with the character sheets. So that's all that I'm. Uh, Makes you wonder if they're not switching them over to second ed behind the scenes. I wonder. I don't think it's that eh, quite that bad. Um, so let's see. I'm going to. Go ahead and uh, well, let's see. From the the highest of rolls that had been gotten on that, I would take a point of threat, which would give me a momentary total of thirteen. I'm going to spend just sort of a blanket advantage that allows people to ignore uh, some of this as they are taking a more careful approach with thrusters. Uh, so the the remaining vessels are going to advance like very slowly on the uh, on the initial course here i'm going to have to zoom us in a little bit here so where they are kind of getting all packed in on these segments uh they're about um 
the the yawn is not taking any such chances basically you are going just straight at it um, and trying to uh, trying to quickly just burst through the field uh, you are actually cutting well around them um, let me make sure that I have in fact select, uh, selected the right ship there no those are the iridians uh, let's see nope the lions there's the on Okay, so the Yon is pretty quickly clearing uh, this element here. Um, as, like, you're mostly focused on ahead of you, but Vopri at this point is going to see that because uh, the, the Terran freighter seems to have struck a, uh, like, because they rolled a complication, uh, they are going to deal with, um, oh dear, uh, uh, Captain... It seems that one of our tanning uh, opponents has suffered a... Uh, or they appear to be going off course and further towards the field. I believe that they're... Uh, I'm uncertain as to exactly why. There uh, may be some sort of issue. One of the other ships, or uh, we're doing that? No, no, one of the other ships. We are... Uh, moving around through the fields uh, with uh, quick abandon. Uh, well, today is a good day to fly, so let's let's keep going. Yeah, um, that was good. GM. Just for that, the GM is uh, the GM is going to expend a. Well, let's see. I'm going to have. Um, as we get into the second round, I am going to have one of the ships uh, pull something in order to, um, just to close in a little bit. Um, they are going to attempt, uh, let's send that the, oh, right. that's difficulty two. Uh, Captain, there is an unusual leading from one of the vessels further back in the field. I, I think I am detecting signs of the, the Sulaban vessel. Um, there are distinct power signatures. Maybe they are deploying probes of some sort? <whistles> Not what I meant to do. Sorry. Okay, so they score two successes. Uh, Vopri gets a uh, gets the sensors focused. As it, it looks as though where you see one uh, the basically sensor emissions suggesting one major uh, like one ship. There is the beginnings of a uh, are there signatures suggesting that there are three distinct but uh, slightly less powerful vessels. So three ships functioning as one. Hmm. The Sulaban of your reality have had in the past, or they're known to have uh, some smaller pod type ships, which are capable of disconnecting from each other or connecting in. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, with, with the second round here and uh, with the, with the notion that you guys, uh, well, you've cleared, uh, well, basically, as the yawn is basically zipping through the, uh, the yawn is zipping through the course, um, with the six points of work, you pass between two large formations and uh, make a close pass of the beacon. Um, really, it's hard to digest any of this information at the rate that you're going, Azik, because you have just been in the zone on this whole situation. And you know that while this is risky, you could clear the path if you are care uh, if you are uh, if you keep your edge here. You've uh, in comparative in a very comparatively short amount of time, you have uh, exhibited quite a bit of daring uh, just 
breaching this very small segment of field. Um, I'd say in the time it's taken here, like a, a single interval that it thrusters uh, would have maybe had you go half as far uh, has not been a, it's basically not been a problem. So you are about to prepare for your next advance when the GM drops two points of threat on the field to purchase an asteroid encounter that you guys are going to have to deal with. Yay. I'm going to re-roll because nobody is that close. Damn it. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many re-rolls are you going to get away <laughs> I think we get momentum every time you re-roll, right? I, I'm only doing this because the it needs to make some sort of narrative sense and you just kind of blew past everybody so that's uh, until they catch up it's it's not going to make as much sense um, that being said um, yeah, Ezek as you're charting a course uh, Vogue Prize says uh, Ezek and Ward uh, sorry, Captain uh, I would suggest uh, making a uh, well either adjustment to course or a reduction in speed or a, a possible other means of getting a, there's an asteroid cluster in our path um, uh, it, it will pose an issue for us to continue to advance so all right uh, we will head so we were we were at thrusters before. No, you were at impulse before. We were at impulse before. So yes. now we need to shift to thrusters to make it easier to get through. Yes. So essentially, there there are asteroids ahead um, that have drifted into your path. Um, it will require a task just to navigate around them um, for this turn. If you refuse to, then you can still attempt your task, but. Uh, at increased complication range. Um, the, let's see, well, no, it, it would be increased uh, difficulty and, it, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, it actually is an increase in difficulty uh, by one for thrusters, by two for um, impulse engines, and impulse comes with an increased complication range. Uh, yeah, so let's drop to thrusters. Yeah, um, I, I will say these. This can be uh, dealt with in other ways if you are interested. There are there are tactical options. There are uh, or maneuver options. I leave it up to you guys. Is there? Could I roll a some kind of a maybe an insight con or insight engineering to see if there's a way we could. Uh, move those as we fly through them? Um, let's see. I would say that uh, based on uh, based on what you're seeing and uh, what Vopri is telling you uh, he'll say mm -hmm. uh, we, we may be able to use a tractor beam to redirect the uh, uh, redirect the asteroids slightly uh, if we wanted to create an uh, advantageous situation. Uh, Would that be is, against the rules? Um, not, not necessarily. Um, I, only direct attacks are prohibited or disruption of the beacons themselves. Um, okay. There, there uh, is an unusual charge to the asteroids or some sort of unusual uh, sort of uh, difficult to discern without conducting a proper task. Oh, and okay. The, the task, uh, if I were to do more than it would uh, it would expend time. Let's just, you know what? We're going to play this honorably. Let's just, let's just keep punching our way through um, using impulse, no, using thrusters because that's the one difficulty and uh, let's just fly our way through this 
Okay. Do you, are you going to try and just pass by these asteroids as uh, best as po uh, as best as possible, or are you specifically charting your course first to navigate around them? So it'll charting that's... charting our course through uh, around. Uh, so I'm going you know to say what? that, like, to deal with this, it will be one thruster task to uh, basically specifically navigate around this cluster. Or you can try to, like, press on with your normal task and just hope that, uh, or, like, uh, basically try to avert any complication there. I'm, we're, I, we're just going to go for it. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So let's just, let's just chart a course straight through it and do a barrel roll between a couple of the asteroids and call that good. Okay, that will be control plus con, and um, let's see, that would be difficulty of two with the proximity of the asteroid, although your your flyby would reduce it to one. I am, however, um, going to supplement the complication range on this. Um, let's see, I only gave it complication at impulse, I think. I'm going to raise the complication range to three with three points of threat. Okay. I'll gra I'll drop a thing for a third <coughs> dice. Excuse me. And uh, I will say over the comms, uh, internal ship comm, uh, hang on to your butts. Uh, let's see. I think you meant to buy one additional die there, Isaac. I think you meant to buy a uh, roll one additional die there, Isaac. <laughs> it's not my... There we go. <laughs> All right. And uh, that is a 19 on that first die there with the, the cannon roll there. So that should count for a complication. Uh, would somebody care to roll for the ship as well? Right. All right. Engine spawn? Yes. That's it. Hello? <laughs> yes, yes, that is correct. Engines plus con. Complication range of three. Ah. All right, well, that will not succeed, but that will not complicate on the ship. The ship, however, uh, firing up its thrusters, uh, is able to proceed on course. Azik, you run past the asteroids when alarms start blaring off. Uh, uh, Captain, I'm detecting uh, signs of uh, activity from the asteroids. It, it, they're, uh, oh, oh dear. They appear to be magnetizing and approaching our hull quickly. Uh, with this specific scenario, Azek, you have run into a magnetized ionic, uh, or like ionic asteroid set. So they start clamping onto the hull, and um, there are there are signs of like an a an energy field of sorts building up around the hull the more material that it accrues. Uh, these are a lot of small uh, rocks that accrue onto the hull. There's some pounding as the armor uh, takes a bit, of a, a bit of a battering, but it will not be enough to cause that much of a problem. That being said, I have challenged dice to roll here. Checking this here. Hmm. So as it is, uh, your thrusters kick on. Uh, you immediately notice that the lights begin to dro uh, to droop a bit, and the the thrusters sound as though they are beginning to uh, like the engines sound like they are beginning to putter a bit. Um, even a momentary feel of inertia uh, starting to press on you very slightly as uh, the 
a polar, uh, a mag, uh, an electromagnetic field begins to build up around you. Um, you will lose three points of power, and I think that this is actually going to be, whereas the ship struggles to keep its momentum, this is where we are going to cut off for now. Yeah, I was looking at the time on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for the above board, you basically, you remember, uh, all of you guys remember the uh, Lower Decks second season finale? Nope, I haven't seen it. Oh. Uh, well, any of you that remember what happened to the Archimedes and uh, during that stretch of time, you've, you've run into a small version of that. I see, I see. This is problematic. This is. And if we'll... Betty doesn't if Betty doesn't say, Aw, it likes me to the rocks attaching to the hull, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Hmm. Then I guess you'll just have to be disappointed, sweetheart. Yep. Uh, let's <laughs> let's see. Just before before we get things set uh, gone for tonight, I do want to make sure that I note the uh, technical um, technical bits here let me just uh let's see on the earlier roll you actually should have gotten uh, a point of momentum back i think for the uh, for succeeding um and then another point for as succeeding here as well so in total momentum from the two tasks as they've been should be up to three right now uh, and yeah, I will. I'm going to have to con uh, conduct my uh, role here for later next time, um, or for the ships. I might go ahead and do that off stream. But uh, for those of you in the archive, uh, I will. Uh, this is where we're going to leave you off now. We'll cover more of this in a bit. And uh, I hope you folks enjoy the rest of your day, uh, the rest of your evening. We will catch you next week. If you want to join us live, we run these uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, until then, chapla, and we will see you later.